Thank you.
Hello, hello everybody! <laughs> People liking my new introduction there, I might have spent a little bit too much time making that, but I felt that it was very necessary. I needed a creative output to show you all my wonderful blocks that we will be working with today. Um, welcome everyone to a millinery live stream. Oh dear, is the sound bad? Oh, is the music bad? Oh, we're just figuring out some audio-y things, turning on the background music. Welcome, welcome everybody. Chat amongst yourselves and to me in the chat while we test the audio. Okay, that should all be good. Welcome everybody again um, to a millinery studio blocking live stream. This is going to be a three-part live stream this time where I will be blocking uh, several on ah. <laughs> talking and changing audio levels is very difficult. Um, <laughs> I'll be blocking four blocks every month. So the plan is I haven't pre blocked anything. The plan is to block on four blocks this week. Then next month in the next live stream, I will be able to unblock those four blocks and re block on four new blocks. So we're gonna have a bit of a, a rolling hat block extravaganza this time round. Right, well, how is everybody? Um, 
we've had a very sad week in the UK, as I'm sure everybody is aware of. Um, I'd like to take this to one or two hour opportunity during this stream to not think about current events and to just unwind a little bit, just be in the hat blocking space and try to not feel too sad or think about anything that's going on in the world because it is very sad that the Queen has died. Um, and thank you everybody for your wonderful response on my um, roundup of the Queen's hats as a tribute to her late majesty video. That's been very lovely to see you all appreciating my take on her majesty's hats. Thank you everyone. Um, right, I said we won't be sad. We're not going to think about that this stream. We will do some blocking. Now, every live stream, before I jump into the meat, I like to talk about, let's say, the potatoes first. And this week, it's I'd like to show you all a little new acquisition that I've had, which is this little... <laughs> How cute is that? Let's change camera angles. This is a little pin holder. Well, it's not a pin holder. It's supposed to be like for little crafty items, but I have so many different pins that I use for millinery purposes that I thought to myself, this is a perfect way to store them all. So I've got my household pins that I sometimes use for dressmaking, but also they're very good for blocking because they don't leave holes that are too big in the wood. So they're just silver, normal, thin-ish pins. They do break sometimes in the wood, so you have to be careful with those. Then I've got my usual blocking pins, the black enamel pins. Those are a little bit thicker, but they're good for harder wood types. Then I've got my glass head pins for dressmaking. I don't tend to block with these. Sometimes I will poke them into Anne, my cork poupe head, because the glass heads make them easier to take in and out. And then I've got some entomology pins. Now, if you are a seamstress, um, or in fact, if you if you sew a lot with silk for hats or dresses or anything like that, I highly recommend you get yourself some entomology pins. If you don't know, entomology pins are those pins that they used to use to kind of display bugs and butterflies um, taxidermied and that kind of thing. But they are so incredibly fine that they are perfect for silk. They don't cause any marks. So get yourself some entomology pins, and if you are going to get yourself some entomology pins, the ones that I have are size two black enamel. So these ones, size two black enamel. You can get them from fancy sewing shops, or you can order them directly from entomology science suppliers, and they are about half the price if you order them from the entomology science suppliers, but they do take twice as long to arrive. So. If, if you don't need them straight away, you can get them cheaper directly from science people. So those are quite useful. And then I, I did run out of pins to put in the other four drawers. I'm sure there are plenty of other types of pins I could pit, fit in, but I've just put my labels in here. So I've got two sets of labels. Oh, <laughs> if I tilt it forward, all the drawers come out. I've got two types of labels. I've got a white label and a tea stained label. I think it just looks a little nicer when it's beige sometimes, and d depending on the hat. Anyway, that's my new acquisition for this week. What fun. Right. Shall I show you what we're blocking today? I asked you in my um, Restoring Antique Hat Blocks video, which block was your favorite? I asked everyone to vote in the comments, and some people did, and if you didn't, well, you didn't get a say, so I'm sorry about that. Um, maybe my moderator, who is my husband, Matthew, you could pop a link in the chat in case people have missed the Restoring Antique Hat Blocks video. That was quite a fun one. I taught myself woodworking, pretty much, is, is, uh, is the alternative title to that video. Oh, hello, Roxanne. Roxanne is one of my lovely Patreons on Patreon. Thank you for joining me today, Roxanne. Lovely to see you. We are about to get into what blocks we're doing today. The number one hat block that was voted the most popular one that everyone wanted to see was... Drum roll please, everybody. The turban crown. That's this one. I'm calling it a turban crown. 
because I think it looks a little turban-esque with this here. Oh, Roxanne, it's 12.30 a.m. in Australia and you're watching me live stream. I hope you get enough sleep today after this. I don't want to keep you for too long. So, this is the number one winner. I'm not going to block on this one first, I'm going to block on this one second because I thought it might be nice to block on... What I should have done was prepared a sound effect for when I have to duck out of shot to get the hat block. I thought we'd start blocking on this one because I want to try blocking Cinema on this and if I block it well, it might dry in two hours and we might be able to peel it off the block before leaving the stream, but no guarantees on that because I don't know how it's going to... I don't know how it's going to block. I'm going to try and block a bias strip of Cinema on the block and I'll, I'll explain all of that in a second. Um, before I show you the last two blocks, do you know what, should we just get started? Let me start the stream, um, start the steamer running, so, uh, let me know in the chat if I need to go through basics in blocking, or if you'd all just rather I just ploughed on through and show you all the shapes. Um, because uh, I've had lots of new people subscribe and join, which has been absolutely lovely. So if you're new here, please let me know if you don't know what's going on. But I'm going to pop a nozzle that looks like this onto my steamer. This nozzle here. This is a nozzle where the steam will come out upwards. So usually I use this nozzle where the steam comes out forwards. This is a garment steamer nozzle. And this is a steamer nozzle that allows the steam to go upwards, a bit more like a kettle. And the reason I want to do that is because this block doesn't have a base to be put on. I'm going to have to hold it in my hand. So I figured that I'd rather have two hands free, so I'm not holding the steamer and the, the steam will go upwards. So let me just pop that on. Is the light on? Yep. Yeah. We'll just wait for that to heat up quickly. Right cling film. So I have restored these blocks. So th this one, in case you don't remember from the video, it had a great big giant split in it, which you can still see where the split was because I've obviously covered it in um, wood filler, but you can still see the different textures between the natural wood and the wood filler. There was a giant split here, so it's been stuck together. I'm hoping it doesn't come undone, but we need to cover it in cling film so that it's nice and protected and for those of you who've been joining my previous streams you will be glad to know i finally finished that awful cling film that i had this is a new batch of cling film this is cling film from lidl a budget shop in the uk let's see if it does well if it even sticks to itself because that previous cling film did not stick to itself now i'm going to wrap this block up in a kind of round motion which is the only sensible way I can think of doing this. Is it stick? Oh, it is sticking to itself, thank goodness. to wrap your blocks well because you don't want any moisture going through but you also want to minimize the amount of cling film overlap that's going to be a little bit impossible on this one maybe one day I'll come up with a better way of doing this
And I also haven't decided yet whether we should block on the underside of this block or the over or the outside of it. So over the top or over the underside. No idea. Never blocked a brim like this before. And usually on antique blocks, you can tell where people have blocked before because you can see the pinholes. But on this one, it's impossible to tell. Absolutely impossible. It, it had so few pinholes in it that I really couldn't figure it out. Now hopefully that steamer doesn't play havoc with my microphone. So if it gets annoying, if you guys can hear that steamer with the microphone, I will turn the microphone off, block it, and then we'll discuss what's happened afterwards. And I can turn up the music if we need to do that, but you let me know. Roxanne asks, "Is um, this is the block that is reminiscent of the red hat the Queen wore at Charles's christening? Yes, it is. It's that kind of late 40s, early 50s style. And before we start blocking, it would kind of be worn a bit like this. My bun's in the wrong place, but it, it it's a brim, essentially. But it's like a mini brim. It's quite cute. Right, let's get that cinema. I prepared for this. What I've done is, if you've seen my video on Cinema Bias Brims, this is essentially what I've got here. I have a Cinema Bias Brim. So, um, husband, who is my moderator, Matthew, maybe you could pop a link to that video into the chat in case people haven't seen it. Um, just four layer Cinema Bias Brim. If you want to know what that is, you'll have to go and watch that video after the stream. Let's see how this is going to work. I'm going to find my center front, which is somewhere here. Let's go on the outside, it will be easier. And I'm going to try and... I know some people use water with cinnamon, but I want this to dry quite fast, so I'm just going to very lightly steam it and then use my hands to just shape it round the block. And I think my aim here is to over, um, not overlap it, I was going to maybe underlap, is that a word? Underlap it on the underside um, and kind of join it together under there and to kind of form a, a sausage around the block. I haven't figured out how we're going to take this off the block, but we'll see. That's looking very pretty. Oh, I was going to tell everyone the reason why I've done this as a cinema bias brim, and that's because I've been thinking about cinema. Obviously, it's been the summer season, people like their cinema hats. Cinema is quite a cheap material compared to a parasitical straw. And I was thinking that. You used to be able to get very, very fine parasitical straw that's so well woven and so thin that it actually looks a little bit, on brims, like cinema on the bias. So I thought maybe I could try and emulate that by using this bias cinema. So that's why I've done a cinema bias brim thing to see if that can happen, if it looks pretty. It does feel like it's a lot of work. It would have been so much easier to just get a flat piece of cinema and stretch it over the top, which is how you would usually do it. But when have I ever chosen the easy way to do things? Never. I'm going to need something to hold the center of this in place because it, it's starting to move and what I've got for that is I'm going to start tying a blocking string around it. Michael says, I just finished 
a brim only hat to account for large bun on top of my head and people told me it doesn't count as a hat I'll have to find a picture of the Queen's hat to prove them wrong ah Michael the Queen's hat did have a crown but I have I have seen debate in the past week in millinery social online community about what is a hat and what isn't a hat and I am very quickly coming to the conclusion, just, you know, in life in general, that does it really matter? <laughs> does anything really matter anymore? I mean, maybe I sound like I'm um, going through a bit of a tough time at the moment, but if you like it and you wear it, does it matter if it's called a hat or not? If you, if you want it to be, really technical about it maybe i would call that a visor uh because a visor doesn't tend to have a um a crown attached to it so maybe you could get away with calling it a visor or a bonnet you could call it a bonnet depending on the angle you wore it Roxanne says, the cinema will spring back when it's cool enough and you can almost unravel the shape. If you have if you have made the folds tight enough, the form should spring back. Being biased, it should wiggle out well enough. Yes, I see what you mean. Yes, I see exactly what you mean. That's what we'll have to discover when I'm done with it. I don't know how long this will take. Depending on how long this takes, because I want to get through four blocks in... If I want to get through four blocks in two hours, that's about half an hour per block. So what we might end up doing is when we reach the half past mark, however far I get, I'll put it to one side and I'll have to finish it off stream and you'll have to join me next month. I, I schedule these in advance. So if you're subscribed, you should receive the notifications. So if you, yes. So if I don't manage to finish this this month, uh, this today, which I might not. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, this is helping. So I'm holding it against my stomach and just pulling it round a little bit. There we go. That's looking better. How's that microphone and the sound? Is that okay or is it playing havoc with anyone's ears? Do you know what? This is looking very pretty on the bias actually let me show you a close-up of the weave look at that oh isn't that so pretty on the bias that's really lovely so can you see what i'm doing with the what's it string blocking cord does everybody in the chat know what a blocking cord is if you don't ask away Okay, people are liking the people are liking the sound of the bubbling water. Good, I'm glad. Oh, that was hot. Oh, do you know what? Since I'm doing this, here's another thing I've been doing recently when blocking because I I really hurt my hand, and then I thought I've still got to block some hats and because you know people keep ordering hats because it's winter now, so everyone's getting their berries. And so I've still got to block. I had a bit of a bad burn on the back of my hand and obviously you don't want to aggravate burns so I put some washing up gloves on thinking okay well I can wash dishes in hot water with these maybe I can um, block with these and not feel as much pain and yes indeed so if I do that I won't feel too much of the steam being a problem I have a feeling I'm starting to run out of water there but I am prepared. Right, let's try and get this round a little bit more. Okay, it's a bit messy on the underside here. There it is. So it's got some kinks in it. Uh, Bianca asks, how often do you make a new hat and how do you make the time for it? Well, that is a very interesting question because, I'm just going to top up my steamer. That's an interesting question because this is my profession, so I am I'm paid to make new hats all the time. So essentially I make them all the time. But before this was my full-time job and it was a bit of a hobby, 
I guess I was kind of making one hat for every season. So, uh, and when I say season, I kind of mean like fashion seasons. So, well, ooh, wrong top, wrong top of steamer. We want this one, we want the spouty spout. So, when I mean seasons of fashion, I mean there's autumn, winter, and then there's spring, summer. So I would make myself maybe a winter hat for the winter, like a blocked felt. And then in the summer, I'd make myself a summer hat. And then when this became my profession, um, I was, I've, I've been working to a schedule of seasonality, but making more than one hat per season. So this year, for example, I'm working towards releasing maybe about five new models this winter. Um, and the time consuming bit is actually designing the hat. But once I figured out what the hat should look like, then I need to figure out how it's made. And then once I figure out how it's made, I need to make it. And it's that, that first making of the very first sample model, that's, um, that's usually the most time consuming bit because that's the first time you're making a specific hat and you're thinking about how on earth am I going to make everything work? Um, so, yeah, just one hat at a time is better than several hats in one go. I hope that makes sense. There was a time when I was making several hats in one go, and that was a bit too much on my brain. It was, it was too much to think about. Okay, I've come to the end of my blocking cord, and what I'm going to do, because I don't want to pin into the... Oh, oh dear. I think my camera's run out of battery, so perhaps my wonderful assistant can come and pop in a camera battery for me. Um, so I'll show you in the front camera. So what's going to happen is I've run out of this blocking cord, I'm just going to pin it in to itself rather than pin into the wood. I'm just so paranoid of this block splitting from me trying to hammer a nail into it. Uh, Bianca says, oh I should have specified how often do you make a hat for yourself and not the shop? <laughs> still, I, I would say, I, I slightly tried to answer that, so still I will make myself maybe one hat a season. And I'm not one of those people that likes fast fashion, so I will wear every single hat I have. Um, and that's how I make loads of hats, and I wear loads of hats. You might see me on my Instagram wearing loads and loads of hats. Um, and you know, yeah, I've pretty much made most of them unless it's a vintage hat. So this is how I've pinned it to itself. So it's kind of that my pin is going through two bits of string and through a couple of layers of cinema, but it's not touching the wood. So we have almost reached half past. This is gonna take me, because I'm trying to talk, um, <laughs> it's probably gonna take me another half an hour to get this to curve round fully. But I think we're getting an idea of what this will look like. This is what it looks like from underneath. It's a mess. I've clearly not made my bias cinema brim wide enough to wrap twice around it. Never mind. So I will have to figure out a nice cutting line, which we can do in the next live stream. I'm going to pop this to one side. Um, I'm going to then, oh, there's been some more questions. Oh, Roxanne asks, morning hats in demand at the moment. Not yet, um, but I haven't done morning hats. So my brand, if you like, is very much bright and cheerful and all the colors. So I think if people wanted morning hats, they might not really come to me anyway, because my customers tend to be younger ladies, tw mid twenties, mid thirties, looking for a hat that's a little more dressy, but not, not necessarily special occasions. So so that kind of middle bit where people just want to dress up a little bit more, but it's not for anything special. And I think a morning hat, we, we could call those occasion hats, not necessarily like celebratory occasion, obviously not celebratory occasion, but um, an occasion hat nonetheless. I think there's many more milliners more suited than me to be supplying those. It would be interesting to know if we see an uptick in 
in that, but you've got to remember the, f the funeral turnaround time is very fast. I think we've got... Um, if I talk too much about the Queen and current events, someone can just, like, tell me in the chat that they don't want to hear it and I'll move on. But in case you are interested, we I think we've got a 10-day period of official mourning, and then the funeral is Monday... This coming Monday, I think. Um, yeah. So, and hat turnaround times tend to be slower, the smaller the hat business. So when someone wants to purchase a hat from me, I normally say to them 20 to 30 working days to get a hat made because it depends on in-stock materials. And when you need a morning hat, you kind of need it fast. Um, but it is a subject that I am interested in from a Victorian fashion perspective in mourning millinery and some of my books, if some of you, some of my ancient millinery textbooks, um, if you guys watched my book review live stream, millinery book club, some of those had mourning millinery sections and I'm, I am interested in trying that. Um, I don't think now is the right time because I think that would be a little bit on the nose and disrespectful, so I don't want to talk about mourning millinery just because the Sovereign has died. That's I, I, I want to talk about mourning millinery because it's an interesting subject in itself that requires a bit more in-depth research from me, which at some point I will do. Oh, we've got some new people joining. Welcome everybody, welcome. We have just been blocking on this rounded brim hat block, mini little wavy brim. I'm going to stop here because I want to get through some other hats. I'm just taking a quick tea break. In fact, I need to top up my mug. So I'm just going to pop on a one minute intermission for you all. You may see an advert, um, sorry about that. Um, but I'm going to top up my tea mug and I will be back in 30 seconds to one minute. Thank you. 
everybody, I am back with my replenished cup of tea. And in case you're wondering, it's Darjeeling today. Nice and delicate with the floral notes. Oh, right. As well as getting my tea, I've also made a little hat burrito under my desk. Um, I've got a felt steaming up down there, getting all nice and moist and steamed up so that we can block it on this tavern block next. I think a few more new people joined. <laughs> hello, hello everybody. Nice to see some familiar faces there. Anissa, hello. Anissa says, I kept on watching the clock to be on time but was busy with something and now I missed half an hour. Oh, I'm very sorry about that. Um, this stream will be available to view once it's finished. So it's called a VOD, video on demand. Once it's, once, the live bit has passed, so you can go back and watch the first half hour. You missed blocking on a little cinema round um, brim thing. Just checking on my burrito, one second. Oh, that's getting nice and steamy down there. I will be blocking a fur felt on this turban crown imminently. Um, Anissa says, I hope you're doing well. I am doing okay. I mean, we've already discussed that obviously the Queen has died, um, but I've also had a bit of a topsy-turvy week. Um, I guess I'll tell you about my topsy-turvy week while that burrito is steaming up down there. Um, I, <laughs> I sprained one ankle <laughs> and then I broke a toe on my other foot. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I have been a little bit immobile this week, but I've still been filming videos and trying to do things. So I'm not really able to stand on my feet. Um, ideally, when you're blocking, you would be standing up and then you'd be using your stomach to pull down, push down on the top, and we'll probably have to do it for this one, but then I will have to sit down again and rest my foot. <laughs> so, um, it's all very exciting for me in this household. Um, Catherine says, I like the intermission music, I think we should all be roller skating. The intermission music is good, isn't it? It's from Monty Python, so if anyone's into their 1960s, 1970s comedy, and you know Monty Python, that's where that music is from, I think. I think it's from there. Right, I think my fur is ready. Oh, it's very ready. Oh, it's very hot. I'm going to put my marigolds on. Oh, do you know what we haven't done? We haven't covered this in cling film. I'm going to turn off my steamer, let me just check. So we're blocking this purple. Oh, all that steam, all that steam. That's very soft. I'm going to have to turn off the steamer. Oh dear. I'm sorry you can't see this. So when I said hat burrito, essentially, I've got my hat on the steamer and I'm covering it in tea towels to keep that steam enclosing the hat. I've been doing this quite a lot recently. It, it speeds up the process of the hat getting, um, of, of the, the steam working its way into the uh, the bits of the fur in the felt. And if you're worried about using fur felt, obviously you do you, you do whatever you want. If you don't want to use fur felt, that's fine. I'm using fur felt today purely because I had this in my cupboard, first of all. Secondly, I'm going to just use a bit of tape here. Um, so I had this fur felt in my cupboard. So, you know, what would be the point of it languishing away and not being used. Uh, the other thing about millinery felt, millinery fur felt, is if you are buying your things from a reputable hat supplier, hat product supplier, um, the fur felt tends to come from the um, food industry in Eastern Europe. So in places like Czechoslovakia, they really like to eat rabbits, like rabbit stew and things. And that fur from the rabbits would just be wasted if it was thrown away. So I guess I'm quite glad that it has it, an output, but obviously some people don't want any and anything to do with, with those kind of animal products. And if that's your choice, that's fine. There's plenty of other materials you can use. Right, I'm just using some masking tape to get the cling film to stay on the block before I do a second layer this way. 
Oh, this cling film is such a joy. <laughs> In some of my first live streams, comment if you've watched some of the first live streams that were called Come Block With Me. You'll remember I was really struggling with this particular brand of cling film from Amazon and it was awful. It would not stick to itself. But this one, oh, it's so wonderful. So wonderful. It is definitely sticking to itself. I have made a bit of a mess of this. This is a bit difficult to cover because it's so big. It's so much easier to cover plain crowns. Just make sure that there's enough space there. Something I have been meaning to try. Maybe I should have tried it on this block. Yeah, maybe I should have done. Um, apparently some people use, some milliners, use um, uh, other things to cover blocks. Aluminium foil. You can use that, tin foil. Apparently that works. I haven't tried that yet. Maybe we can try it next stream. So let me know if that's something you want me to have a go out, go at and see if that works. Uh, the other thing we could have used is a freezer bag or like a, like a rubbish bag to put it over the top. Some people use those. Apparently that works. Right. Gloves on. And let's start pulling the felt. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Did it lose its? Let's see how far. Let's see how far it goes before it needs a bit more steam. Oh, it's like butter. Off it goes. Absolutely right, like butter. Oh, I don't have enough on one side. Let's slightly reposition that. I don't do my best blocking live. I get I get a bit self conscious and nervous. <laughs> so. There we go, that's going pretty well. So I'm going to start using my fingers to get the grooves in. Mm. That's gonna need some more steam. So sometimes, and I know everyone has their own way of blocking and everything, but sometimes what I like to do when there's quite a wide block, and obviously your cones, they come in a cone shape. Sometimes they're quite small on the top and you want it to go nicely over the top. I'll do a kind of preliminary block and pull it outwards like this. Then I'll get the steamer, pop the steamer back on, take this back off the block, take the gloves off. The problem with the marigolds is it's very difficult to feel through the gloves. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull this back off, maybe spray the inside a bit. Again, you know, there's always discussion, should you spray the felt with water, should you not? You don't want the felt soaking wet because that can be difficult to work with. It will take ages to dry and your pins might rust, so you don't want it soaking. But I'm just making my little burrito down here again. Maybe just before we end the stream, I'll show you my burrito process down there. Uh, Rachel from the YouTube channel Labricaloos. So if you don't know who Rachel is, go and subscribe. Rachel is a professor of millinery. So she knows more than any of us do. Um, Rachel says, I use tin foil sometimes and have some tin foil adhesive tape so you can put seams into it and get sleek covering. Ooh, that sounds like a really good idea. I am going to have to have a look at tin foil adhesive tape. Husband, write that down somewhere. <laughs> I don't have any paper on me. I don't have anything to write with. Um, make a note for me, please. Um, I want to look that up when we're done. Rachel also says, I also sometimes cover the block with cling film and then use a hairdryer to shrink wrap if the wrap is baggy in places. Oh, I've never managed to get that to happen quite well. I've no I don't think I've had cling film that, that can do that. How are we doing for time? Right, I have 20 minutes left to block this one if we want to get through. Oh, it's hot, 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 hot. Right, let's go again. I'm trying to get it nice and straight and even. Oh, look at that, it's gone on so much better. Right, so the worry here was always, oh, that looks so good. Oh, look at that, oh, it's so pretty. We're gonna have to give this a good brush Right, so 
Ooh, I can also feel my nails bending with all the heat. That's not great. You all know I like my long nails. Let's hope I don't break any today. Okay, so that's gonna be as good as it gets without putting anything here. So now, this was one of those blocks that I had to put wood filler in along the join. So I am very worried that I won't be able to hammer in any pins. Um, and even if I was to hammer in any pins, when you've got grooves like this, you want to get some rope or something to make sure that you've got something con softening that impact of the pin going into the block. Should we try hammering in some pins? Let's try it. Do you know what? If it, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And uh, never mind, at least we tried. I'm very aware my face is not in the shot right now. So we'll give you this view. We'll go for side view. This is just some plain sisal rope. Uh, my one worry about using this rope is it might leave a texture imprint on the fur, but maybe that can be brushed out. I'm also going to go for a thin household pin because I don't want to leave any big pin marks and I'm not one of those milliners who says you must sacrifice your fingers for good millinery because you know what, we live in the modern world and let's just use a little hammer. I think that's gone in. Right, we'll carry on then. Oh, lots of people chatting away in the chat. What I will do is I will finish up blocking this, keep chatting away, and I will then read out some of your lovely messages once I've finished this. Otherwise, we'll never get through. So when we finish this, then I can... Hmm, you see, now I'm wondering whether I should have maybe, let's give it a quick brush pre-putting this down. So this is a soft bristle brush. Sometimes you can, um, these are sometimes used on like suede shoes. And the reason I'm giving it a brush is just that fur felt is, fur felt has a little bit of a nap to it. So you kind of want to give those bristles of fur a, a nice direction over the top and it just makes it look just that little bit more professional and it makes it look that little more polished and finished. Oh, uh, the, the, the banging of this probably isn't as ASMR-y as, uh, as the water bubbles were earlier. Do you know, I'm surprised at how well this is working. I worry that a wool felt on this would not have worked so well. So this is another reason why some milliners will exclusively work with fur felt. It's not because it's fancier, it's because it's easier. <laughs> because it's, it just melts around the block. It melts like butter. So what I've done here is I've got one pin going one way, like this, at this angle. And then on this side, I've got a pin going in, in, in the opposite angle. And that will even out that, um, that piece of rope. And then I'm really trying to press that in over here to really get that groove. I'm going to put all my pins in going one direction and then I'm going to switch and do all these pins like I've done over here in the other direction. Oh, that went in very well. And then we'll tackle the underside of this block. If you've seen my um, restoring antique blocks video, you'll know what's coming on the underside of this block and it's scary. <laughs> it's going to give this rope a little bit of tension, just pulling it down a little bit and then popping in another pin. If you don't have a little hammer, I think these hammers are much easier to buy, but you can also use one of these, which is a pin pusher, which at the time I bought it, I thought was a lifesaver because I'd always been so used to pushing in pins with my thumb like this. And then I'd get the pin pusher and do that pushing motion instead. But actually I'm finding I have much more control with the mini hammer than I do with the pin pusher. And the pin pusher sometimes bends the pins as well. So it's, it's but I wonder if that's mainly because, oh, do you know what I didn't account for? This underside of this poking out bit. We'll have to figure that out later. We'll see how we go. And you know what? If it doesn't work, 
it's not the end of the world because the great thing about felt is if you haven't cut into it you can take it off and try again <laughs> right i'm pretty happy with that i might pop in one more pin up here i'm going to go in the opposite direction at the top Yep. Here we go. How are we doing? How are we doing? Just going to check it. I'm, I'm now just going to just look at it and just make sure that that rope is following a very pleasing curve. It looks like it is. Right, I know that there's one more curve around this side. So let's do that one now. Get the same rope and curve it. Which way is it curving? It's curving this other way. Oops. Where is it? Here it is. Tea break, mini tea break. Oh, my foot. Oh, I'm also getting very, very warm. Oh, that's a good point. That's something else I was going to mention just while I carry on with blocking this. Um, normally I'd wear an apron whilst blocking um, because you never know if you've managed to get stiffener on the, so you, you see how I'm using my stomach to kind of drop on top and push down against the table to get a good angle. Um, you never know if any stiffener or anything has seeped through to the top of your felt. It shouldn't have done, but sometimes it can, especially if you're blocking something like cinema or buckram, that will get very sticky and messy. So you do want to be wearing an apron. Uh, usually I wear a lab coat because the fabric on lab coats is nice and thick and really protective of clothing for obvious reasons. Um, but today, because I have to keep all my windows closed for getting some good audio for you guys, I am, um, it'll, it would be way too, too warm to wear that lab coat. Well, that definitely needs another pin. So I wonder if you can see on there, if I press in with my finger from this side, can you see how far I can push that in? That means it needs another pin. That means something's not going quite right. And in fact, maybe I've put my pins in at the wrong angle. So let me try, maybe we'll try this kind of angle here. No, blocking is always such a trial and error process. Yep, yeah, that's gone in fine. Yeah, that's got it. So yeah, so I'm going to take out this pin that I put in before that one and putting in, oh, whoopsie. Give me one second. I'm just going to go and grab that pin before it does any harm to anyone. I'm going to send you to find that pin somewhere on the floor. I just dropped a pin and I don't want the cat to... I don't know where it's gone. We've lost a pin and we have a small cat, so we've got to find the pin on the floor. It's one of these silver ones, husband. Sorry. <laughs> Health and safety always first. I think I also pulled out a pin from the top here. Yes, I did. I wonder where that went. Right, okay, we may have two rogue pins on the floor somewhere. We will have to remember that and deal with that later. So if you do have small animals running around, you always want to make sure that you never let your pins go rogue and fall into places for your own peace of mind. It definitely flicked forwards, husband. Oh, wait, I found it, I broke a pin. Well, that's one of them. There's a second pin somewhere, but this is a broken pin. This is what I was talking about earlier with the household pins breaking like this, you see? So that's now somewhere in this wood. So that's something that I'm going to have to remember for when I take this off the block. And I have a sharps jar, which I will be putting that pin into later. Okay, if we can't find it now, we'll find it later. Okay, how are we doing with this side? See how this is going now? Is there any more to 
Oh, there's a lot more. Oh, it, it ends all the way up here. So I'm feeling it with my finger. So let me push that bit of rope in, get some more pins out. And we've still got the underside of this to do as well. So we'll go in at that same angle. Actually, I'm going to now alternate. I'm going to put one in this way. Right, we're almost there. I think just a couple more to really get it into good place. Right, no, I think that's gonna have to, um, just one more going like that. There we go. And you never want to use more pins than you have to. Otherwise you'll end up really damaging the wood of the block. So as many pins as you need is as much as is going to happen. Right, so now is the difficult bit from the underside of this. And of course, because I've spent so long putting these, let's see what the underside of this looks like. There we go. It's probably too, um, oh dear, and now this is stuck. This stand doesn't belong with this block, so it's always a bit tough but it's easier to block with a stand. And if you don't have a stand, you can use a jar. Oh. Goodness me, it's coming. There we go, right. If we have a look at the underside here, what's going on, am I going to be able to, oh, it's gonna need a bit more steam. And we are almost at the halfway mark of the stream. So I am going to leave this one to finish off. I think it was important to show you guys this top rope trick but the underside I will do by myself after the stream and then I will unblock it in the next one. So how is everyone doing? <laughs> oh there's a lot of messages that I've missed while I was concentrating on that. Let me just pop this back after trying to get it off and I will have a read through all your questions. Right, let's have a look what's going on. Uh, oh, where can I? Roxanne says, I have recently seen some high-end blocks with complex swirled crowns have an accompanying metal, metal swirl stamp that sits inside the grooves of the form to ensure the articulation of the form stays. Yes, that is a thing. So that stems from, I don't know if um, anyone's seen any images of like hat blocking factories where they use aluminium or steel forms that get heated up and because it's it's such a mechanical it used to be a very large scale process and some men's hats will probably be made in this kind of way on a factory line where you've got your table well your, your stands of the block kind of underside that's aluminium and it's heated and then you've got this top bit that will come down and kind of stamp that shape out from from the top of the block as well as from the from the underneath. So I guess Roxanne, what you're talking about is one of those, but for home use. Um, technically, you don't need that top bit because lots of these vintage forms would have come without the top imprint bit, and you can do the the trick I just showed you with the rope. You can also do that with scrunched up tissue paper. I've seen people do. Don't use newspaper because newspaper ink can um, seep into your felt and you definitely don't want that. So just be careful about that. Uh, Catherine says, 
stretch it tight freeze cling film is amazing just follow the instruction on the box for cutting it's a blue box they sell it on Amazon it's the right amount of sticky and has a nice thickness oh well thank you very much Catherine I shall have to look that up and give that a go and Catherine you also say that you love the purple shade I like it too um, it, I was because I don't tend to go in person to buy millinery supplies there's no in-person millinery supply shops in London that sell at good prices. I tend to order everything online and you can't always get samples. So that purple comes from, um, do you guys remember exactly a year ago, in fact, I think almost exactly a year ago, I was making my bow batons felt hat video. So that's the one from the Harry Potter with the little point and the little upswept brim. Um, so husband, could you pop that in the chat for everyone in case new people haven't seen that one? And I wanted to make it specifically purple because I had a purple jumper I was trying to match rather than the blue, which was the colour from the film. And so I ordered in a whole lot of different purples and there was only one that matched. So I've got all these other purples that are waiting to be used up or rather they have been used up. They've gone on to be made into hats and sold, but that was my last remaining purple from that batch and it was the fur. So I've... I knew that was going to work really well on that shape. Uh, Michael says, Find the drop pin is a constant nerve-wracking game. I've often wondered if you could get a magnet rolled to the floor to pick any strays. And then Catherine says, Put a magnet on a shoelace. That is a brilliant idea. And I shall be trying that after the stream. Obviously, you don't want to then swirl that magnet around and hit something so just i will be very carefully and consciously safely moving it around <laughs> and try that that's a very good idea um anisa says your dress is super cute did you sew it yourself and the color fits very well yes i did this is my version of the mccall's house dress i do not remember the name of the pattern but i think i might have a blog post about it husband if you can have a look at my blog ilona.me.uk and have a look for a house dress if there is an article on that there then it will be posted into the chat if there isn't an article then um message me on instagram and i can point you to the pattern that i used to make this dress but it is self-made um Rachel says, we have a magnet on a stick to pick up drop pins. That's also a good idea, probably much safer than a shoelace. I might try that. Um, Roxanne says, good night, because it's, what did you say it was? Like 1 a.m. or something. <laughs> That's very late. Very, very late indeed. 1.30 a.m. for Roxanne in Australia. Uh, Michael asks, where did I order all the purples? I ordered from everywhere that I could that had purple in stock. This was last year. So um, I tend to order from a company called Baxter Hart and Abraham. They have a factory in Luton where they, I think they dye all the things in Luton there. So that's, uh, Luton is the kind of spiritual home of UK hat making. So they always like to advertise that. Um, then I order from Petersham's. They are always very good. And Petersham's are very, very good on the phone. Um, they give you very good advice on like matching colors and things. So if you have a ribbon from Petersham's, then you can say, oh, I ordered this ribbon like a year ago. Do you still have it? And can you ha can I have a matching cape lean? And they'll, they'll do that quickly for you. They're very good. Um, and then where else? Do you know what? I order from lots of places and I, I will be going through that in a video that will come out at some point about pricing your hats. So if you wait for that video, that will be there then. Uh, and Anissa asks, what do I think about making a sewing video? Well, since you guys are here on my live stream, uh, before we jump into the net ha next hat, I'll give you a quick preview. One second, it's right here. This is a bodice block. Well, it's bodice block with a little bit of extra hip in it. And I will be showing you how to make this in an upcoming video 
that will probably be released towards the beginning of October or in the first week of October but somewhere there so this is this is a very special pattern making system it's probably one well I hope it's something that you guys haven't come across before otherwise I feel like I'd be wasting everyone's time if there's already a video about it but it's an algebraic method of creating a block so minimal fitting because I don't know about you guys but if you sew if you're a seamstress I hate fitting. I would rather calculate everything mathematically and just get it right first time because I hate fitting. I hate fitting so much. I'd rather get it right first time. So that's this system that I've discovered. I've kind of mashed together a couple of my favorite pattern drafting systems into one system and hopefully it works. I think it will work. I'm yet to make this up into a mock-up. Um, that's also going to be in my video. So I'm in the process of filming that in the next week so that's exciting so if you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe and also if you would like to click the like button that would help me very much indeed because the more likes I get the more YouTube shows my videos to other people and usually I'd say the more people we get interested in hat making the better but this time around it's more about um, I want to tell you all about my wonderful pattern drafting system <laughs> Right, I think we've chatted enough. Shall we move on to the next block? What have I got for you now? Mm. Hmm. Do you guys want to see a beret made out of paper or a brim out of parasitical straw? Just type away at the chat while I get the blocks ready. So paper beret or parasitical brim? We will be doing both, it's just which one would you like first? So I've got my brim block here, this is going to be for the straw, and I've got a, uh, not a collar block to go on top of it. And then I have a very special berry block, which I will tell you about. And I will need the stand for this. Oh, people are already saying beret. Okay, do you know what? We'll do the beret. If you weren't fast enough in that response, I'm very sorry. I didn't give you enough time, but I would like to get a move on. So, paper beret. Um, oh, I need an extra thing before we get started. Uh, give me one second while I go to my blocking cupboard and get a jar. I'm just going to just play a quick ad while I go and get a jar. Stay with me. too long. <laughs> ah, right. Where are we now? So this is a jar and I need the jar because this is a self-made beret block. So this shape might look familiar to some of you. Let me show you why. Does anyone remember this? I think I showed it to you last stream. This is my feathered hat that I learned how to make at London Hat Week from Carol Marr. Here it is. This is this. And the shape under here was blocked on a vintage brim block and I really wanted to clone it. So when I got home, I kind of took apart what I'd done in class so that I could copy the shape. And that's how I've ended up with this. This has got Foss shape over the top of it and underneath it it's all plaster and then it's got a bit of string in the underside to be able to pin into because you can't pin into plaster. So that was fun and I've already blocked on this block just to make sure that it can work. This is another paper beret 
Um, has anyone here worked with paper before? Because that was quite an eye-opener for me. Oops. Oh dear. Right. The problem with those feathers is that they will get very fluffy very quickly. Right. Who's worked with paper? This was my first paper blocking experience. Here it is. I think that's pretty good. So this was a... Um, it's like a flat woven paper. And today I'd like to try some twisted paper. Let me show you the difference. So this pretty much looks like a parasizal, but it's about, it's, it's less than uh, half the price of a parasizal. It's very, very stiff. Listen to this. I mean, it's like a helmet, but it's very light. So it's, it's, it's very odd. I don't think I would leave something like this uncovered and the reason why I've decided to make this particular shape in paper is so that I don't have to line it because it looks really pretty on the underside so it doesn't need lining and you could say oh well why didn't you just use cinema because cinema can look really pretty without being lined and that's because cinema is very difficult to get this rolled under edge um, I tried it in cinema and it was all getting bunched up and it really wasn't pretty so paper it is so this is one of these flat paper cape leans. And this is a twisted paper cape lean. Look at that. So it looks a bit more kind of grassy and organic. So I want to try and block with this. And what I figured out is, is that you don't necessarily need steam with the paper. It just needs to be really, really, really wet. So uh, you could soak it in some water, I guess, and just hope that it doesn't dissolve. So um, I don't know if this is the correct way to do this, but this is just how I'm trying to do things. This is generally how I've taught millinery to myself, is to just, you know, give it a go and see. The one problem with the wet method, I'll call it the wet method, because you're submerging it, is um, I did get some pin rusting, and that's a worry. So um, it's got a wire inside it, but can you see this orange dot? That's a rusty pin, that's my worry. Luckily, I've pinned under the bit that will be covered in ribbon, so... Hmm. <clears throat> shouldn't be too much of a problem. So, <clears throat> oh dear. I've got tea going down the wrong way. <clears throat> okay. This is very, very, very stiff, and I'm going to start by spraying it with this. I don't know if I could submerge it in water, but I, I wonder if that would be much quicker. Oh, I should move this blocked one out of the way so that I don't <laughs> get that to lose shape. So last time I blocked paper, it took me about half an hour because it was very difficult to get it to move over the block but once I got it because this is very flat once I got it to flatten out over the top it was quite fast after that and I'm to be honest I'm very pleasantly surprised by how well the paper worked oh that's a very good question Matthew you are thinking like a milliner um, my husband, Matthew, says, I assume you can't wear a paper hat in the rain. Well, you, you shouldn't really wear any hat in the rain unless it's been um, treated. So some felt hats get treated with like an anti-rain agent, but straw hats, paper hats, this will get covered in feathers like the berry I just showed you. So that would not be good in the rain. That will just, I mean, the feathers would just uh, lose their shape and the hats will probably start to disintegrate. So now that I've worked some water into this, it is starting to get quite, look at that, it's, it's now foldable in a way that it wasn't before. I still don't think that's enough water, so I'm, I'm going to try and pull it apart from the inside to kind of stretch out this top bit, because this top bit is going to need to cover quite a flat area. My hair is looking a bit crazy <laughs> from trying on all the hats for you guys. 
sound of the spray bottle can't be uh, much better than the uh, sound of the steamer going. Let's see. How does this stretch? It's getting there, it's getting there. Let's try, let's see. Um, I will probably need to wet it some more, but ah, uh, is there a grain line to this? Uh, when I say grain line, I mean, is there like a, a forwards and backwards? Can we see a little cross? Kind of. Okay, we want to locate the front and back of the block because we want to be nice and neat. So let me just quickly find where that is. I did have pencil markings on this. They seem to have come off. Oh no, here it is. That is the... Well, I mean, it doesn't matter as long as it's A direction. So, here, we're aiming to align to here. We want to be nice and neat. I can always rotate it a bit, but I don't really want to be getting into that. Oh, right, let's get that into the center. Or not quite the center, because this one has it. So this is a, this is, this berry has a slight peak towards the back of it, which is where I'm going to put down my hand as I try and pull this paper over. And it's definitely gonna need more water, because the problem with this paper, and I hope it doesn't rip, problem with this paper is that it's starting to dry up already it's so fast because I clearly didn't water it enough so I'm just going to go over the top with more water find that bit again make sure I'm well aligned and then pull it down this side is the side that needs the pulling a bit more wet Okay, I think we're slightly getting somewhere. So this is where wearing an apron is quite important and I'm wearing a house dress so I don't mind if this gets particularly mucky. But I'm going to clamp down over the top and pull forwards. And I'm going to pull forwards with it folded just because I'm paranoid of it ripping. So I figured if I grab two layers. That's getting there, it's getting there. Oh yes, there we go that moved a bit it's moved ever so slightly it's trying to get to the center of the top but I don't want it at the center I want it slightly to the back I'm going to carry on wetting it I'm going to try and pull it backwards a little bit do you know what this twisted one is blocking a lot easier than that um, previous one that I did, that blue one I just showed you. Yeah, I think because it's got a lot more motion in the weave, it's much easier. Okay, this is where I'm going to have to start turning it over and popping some pins in because every time I'm pulling one side, another side pulls up the other way. So I'm just going to get some more water onto it. hope that that stays over here you see if this was a block that wasn't plaster I could put some pins into the center but I can't pin into the center so I'm having to guess about it so in fact the first pin I'm going to put in is I'm going to align this cross at the top which is very difficult to see in the twisted one in the twisted paper I'm going to try and align it with a pin that I'm going to pop into the underside. And this time I am going to use the bigger black pins because they're a little bit sturdier to go into the rope. And I might have to use the pin pusher here because I'm not wearing thimbles and that was silly of me and I don't know where they are. There we go. That was pretty good. Uh, is that aligned? I mean, if it's not aligned, it's not the end of the world because I am going to be covering it but I'd rather it was aligned. So, okay, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to pull it forwards a little bit and try and get that bump out. Well, that bump should come out from the sides.
Oh yeah, there we go. That's happening. That's working now. Oh yes. Lovely. I'm going to pop in another pin. Lots of these black pins that I have are twisted. That's okay. Don't You don't have to throw away a twisted pin. You can spend a lovely afternoon or evening in front of your favourite television show or watching your favourite millinery YouTube videos with some uh, pliers and un unbend them, which I will probably have to do tonight. So doesn't that sound fun, husband? <laughs> Bit more water. Rachel says, um, I blocked a twisted seagrass straw hood that was similar construction to this one and it took the shape beautifully. Yes, this is actually going to my surprise, much better than the other paper one. So I'm glad I tested this on the difficult one because now I think it's easy. <laughs> so if you're gonna try paper, um, my suggestion is to go for the twisted twisted paper rather than the flat paper that looks like parasizal. It's just a little bit easier. And you know what, it is a beautiful texture. I think it's quite fun um, in millinery, in, in, in my kind of design, um, the, the, the kind of design things I like in millinery and also in making clothes, I like different textures. Um, there's this one fabric shop I go to in Soho where, um, as soon as I walk in, <laughs> the, uh, the guy who owns it goes, oh, you're the one who's always looking for the new textures. Let me show you the new range of voiles or whatever. It's always quite fun. Um, so I do like the different fabric qualities and the textures so things like this make me very excited okay so i'm getting a few folds in it i will i will work my way around to those but the aim is to just get the uh north south east west hopefully you will know what that means just points of a compass transposed onto a hat block just get those points in first and then we can go and do the kind of uh if we think of points on a clock we can kind of do the 130 and so on, the, the kind of in-between points of those diagonals, of those straights even, put the diagonals in. There we go. Language, what is it? It's got one in there, pushing that forwards, and we've got another 10 minutes, so actually, on this hat block, so that's actually quite a nice leisurely 10 minutes that we can have. How is everybody doing? Are we excited about these blocks? Are you as excited as me? Did everybody see my new stream intro? What did you guys think? I spent yesterday and today on it. <laughs> Which, arguably, maybe my time could have been spent better, but I had a lot of fun playing with my um, my blocks and, and some music and some different coloured paper backgrounds. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you'll have to watch this stream from the very beginning and just have a look. Oh, whoopsie, I've broken a nail. Oh well, this happens sometimes when blocking. This is the problem with long natural nails. I'm I'm sorry, I'm just going to peel it off. Not very elegant, I'm afraid. Oh well, never mind. I will Hmm. Now I have to decide while I'm blocking whether I want to chop all my nails off or whether I just want to get some acrylics out and build up that nail. I don't go to nail salons, I do it all myself. Um <laughs> I think I'm gonna build up that nail with some acrylic. I, I've been breaking so many nails lately that I'm I'm fed up of having to chop them all short. This is that this nail length that I'm working with at the moment is 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 much too short for my liking. I mean, it's very easy to work with. It's much easier to block with shorter nails than longer nails. But I do miss having longer nails. It's much more fun with longer nails. I can draw pretty patterns on them. How's this looking? This is looking pretty good. Okay, so can you see this? I've, I'm getting folds. So I know my cutting line is ideally about one centimeter under this edge. So as long as I can get these folds out by about at least one centimeter, then I will be happy. And But at the same time, I don't want to overwork the material. Oh, 
Angela says, I love the intro, I was hypnotized. Wonderful. Maybe that's what I want to do. I want to hypnotize you all into wearing more hats. <laughs> um, and Anissa says, I love to know a little bit more about hats. Enjoying your life while cutting a skirt for a party in England next weekend. Oh, what fun. What kind of skirt are you going for, Anissa? Is it a um, like a historical costuming kind of party or is it just like a fun little, you wanted a new skirt so you're making yourself something new? <laughs> I could do with a new skirt. When it got really hot, we had a heat wave a couple of months ago here in the UK and I realized I didn't really have any suitable clothing for a heat wave because, you know, we live in England, the land of rain and cold and blizzards. So <laughs> I, I really didn't have anything that was suitable and I thought to myself, well, I'll just quickly make a tiered skirt, like a peasant style tiered skirt, which was quite in at, the, at that time. And I got halfway through and then, you know, I, life took over and I had to get lots of things done. And so it kind of fell by the wayside and it's now in my wardrobe waiting to be finished. All it needs is hemming and a rubber band, um, elastic band for the waist, because I wanted to make it elasticated uh, just for easier, sewing purposes and I don't I've, I've not really made anything with elasticated waistbands before so I think in a way life got in the way of finishing it but I also got to the step that I found difficult and so I stopped uh, which is something that I do quite often do you guys do that when you get to a difficult stage in your project and you just put the project aside and find reasons to not do that project it's always such a shame when that happens I don't want to be putting in too many pins. So here, let me show you what I've done, keep you updated. So this is this quarter percentile, this quarter of the things. And I've got, this is my north, south, east, west pins there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six pins in one side. And I've got a tiny fold just here. I might put just one extra pin in to try and get that fold out. So what do you guys think of the paper? The, the paper blocking? Do you maybe want to give that a go? It's, yeah. That's good. That's a good amount of pins. It's still a little bubbly here. And you, you can see that there. You can see it, it's not as straight as it would be. And if this wasn't a home homemade block, it would have a good edge to it. And it wouldn't have this because I can press down on the block and that's why it's moving. And that's a bit of a shame, but my idea is to completely kind of cover that edge with ribbon so hopefully no one will notice that it's a little bubbly and maybe one day and this is something i'd like to actually do a video of but i can't fund that at the moment uh, so i'm just saving up through all the um all the various income streams from making the videos i'd like to go to a hat block maker bring him this shape and say can you make that out of wood and i figured that might be a process that you guys would be interested in seeing. So when I get enough budget for that, that would be when you guys will see that video. And I don't know when that's going to happen because I I think, I'm, I'm guessing that if you're getting a custom made block, you're gonna be paying for a custom made block price, which is gonna be probably double the amount a normal block would cost. Anissa says about her skirt, it's a martial arts championship and after that we will have a party so I decided for a vintage skirt inspired from the 50s with a tail that I'm going to line with soft buckram or tarlatan. Oh what fun! <laughs> that sounds like a very very fun thing to wear. That's hilarious. Amazing. You won't be able to wash that tail in the buckram. Catherine says, we need to send Bernadette Banner your way. She does the loveliest hand stitching and the paper blocking is very interesting. Oh, I'm not sure I could deal with hand stitching. This is, this is the one problem with hats is that hats do kind of require a lot of hand stitching. And I do not have the same patience as Bernadette Banner. I cannot sit there and stitch for hours on end. I, if I want a hat, I want it now. 
<laughs> and that normally means um, back to the conversation we were having earlier about um, what's the, um, about how many hats I make for myself and whatever. If I'm making a design I know, on average, well, the longest it will take me is a working hours day. So seven, seven to eight hours per hat. I don't like to make hats that take longer than that because then they become prohibitively expensive to the customer and I like to keep it in that kind of price range, which I will talk about in my pricing video. Um, but obviously the first time I make a hat, it will take me two or three times as long as that to make it because I'm figuring things out. But um, yeah, so I really don't have that patience to just sit there and do the same stitch over and over and over again and my eyes will get tired and I'll just want to move on and find another project. So I need to, I like to make hats that are achievable within a day. That's that's the goals I set myself. And when I say a day, I mean, it, it will take me over a week, but a little bit every day because um, I have to keep up with a lot of things. So because I make the videos and I fulfill hat orders and also I do housework and stuff and um, what else have I been doing? Some sewing stuff here and there. And then sometimes I just need to help out. And I sit on a couple of um, like housing panels here in the UK. So um, just how our housing system works. I like to keep informed with local politics and meetings and things so I'm always busy so I tend to spend about half my day making hats and then half my day doing other things so when I make one hat it will take me several days but only one day's worth of work technically speaking maybe that's a video you're all interested in like a like a vlog of my week I've, I've been contemplating making one of those but I don't know if anyone's interested because I don't think my life is particularly interesting, but maybe, maybe you guys want to know about how I how I function, how I run my business and stuff like that, if it's interesting. Or maybe not necessarily how I run my business, because let's face it, that's boring. But like, what I do in a day, what I eat in a day, how I fit hats in into the day while doing lots of these other things that I've just mentioned. Um, Rachel says, a friend of mine just commissioned a custom block from an Australian block maker. She's in the US. I'll get back on what it winds up costing. Gosh, yes. I mean, that's also going to be shipping fees. Um, I'm very lucky to be making hats in the UK because we have block makers in the UK. Um, but in case you didn't know, block making is an endangered craft here in the UK. Um, I don't know if the world kind of has a list of endangered crafts lists, but here in the UK we have like a, I can't remember what they're called, like a heritage crafts association or something. And they keep track on what trades and industries are dying out in the UK. So skills that we potentially want to save and need some funding, need some new apprentices. Um, and sometimes it goes ext in, um, extinct. So when a craft goes extinct, it's when there's not enough people, well, there's no people doing it professionally. And so it um, fizzles out. And then eventually those skills will get forgotten because no one's written them down, no one's practicing, no one's training, and it's a shame. So um, I do always say, if you can afford it, do go to your, well, the most local block maker to you and see if, they can make you a hat block instead of making one yourself but making your own hat blocks is also a very key skill to millinery. Amoria says I just had a custom hat block made from Hungary it was very pricey at $398 that is pricey goodness I don't know what the conversion rate is from that to pounds because I'm not um I don't really know what American dollars translate into in my head, it's difficult for me, but it does sound pricey. It sounds very, very pricey indeed. Um, but I am I would be very interested in getting this particular beret block made into a wooden form because I just think this shape is so incredibly flattering. And actually, that's something else I wanted to mention. I am so excited. I am so excited because for the first time in decades, 
I have been seeing fashion campaigns, so clothing fashion campaigns from various designers, high street and high end, being photographed with their models wearing headwear. And that's exciting because it means hats are coming back. And hopefully the younger generations, so Gen, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, um, I'm a millennial, I think it's too late for my generation. Hopefully all the newer generations will get interested in wearing hats. And that's going to be so fantastic. Um, I was reading or listening to something that Stephen Jones said a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember what I can't remember if it was a podcast or if it was an article. Um, but he said something along the lines of it's so weird that in the past couple of decades that we as humanity have not been wearing hats because the trend has always been for thousands of years that we like to put things on our heads. And it's just weird that we haven't been. So hopefully this resurgence of berets that I have been noticing is going to be that bringing back of the hat, which I have been waiting for. So isn't that exciting? And I finished blocking the berry. Look at that. So hopefully you can see that I've got this straight line here, the start of the weave going up and down. It's more difficult to see here. Let me show you the comparison between this and the paper, wherever that's ended up. Oh, it's here. Here is this paper. So you could see it better here. This cross section, this little diamond. And this little diamond is sitting on the bit of, it's not central. It's sitting on the highest bit of the beret. And I've tried to do the same here, but you can see it less. Um, and again, with this beret, it doesn't matter because I am going to cover the top of it. Um, but I want the underside of it to look pretty so that I don't have to line it. So that's a, a good hack for you guys. So I think that's turned out pretty well. Let me take a very quick tea break to top up my mug. And we will come back and do the last block, which let me tease it for you. It'll be this one. So if you remember this one from the antique hat block restoration video, this is the one that had a great big hole over here because I sanded down a little bit too much, but this is it. It's nice and restored and we're gonna try and block on it. So I'll see you back here in one minute. back everybody and oh my 
battery's about to run out on the front camera, so could my technical assistant come and help me please? That would be lovely. And while the battery's being changed, uh, let's... Um, I want to show you my little uh, burrito that I was talking about. Um, so, the little burrito for wrapping around fur and stuff. So I've got my steamer, it's not on at the moment. It's on top of a little bit of an ironing board cake, uh, cover. And then I would get a cake clean. Let's just grab one of these. It goes over the top like that. And then you get a bunch of tea towels. So just, you know, I, I don't know if you have tea towels outside of the UK. Is that something that people have? I don't know, but essentially just any kind of thicker cloths and you just throw them over. Oh, and now the other camera's gone. That's annoying. I'm still here, everybody. Oh, <laughs> zoomed in. Right, now I've got to change the other camera battery, but let's keep going with this one. So this is the burrito. So you get your tea towels, and while the steamer's going, imagine the steamer's going everywhere. Um, just covering it with the tea towels. And what this does is it means that the felt will absorb some of that steam a lot better than if you were to just let it steam from one side. If you have one of those giant jiffy steamers, that's not necessarily a problem that you have, but a smaller steamer like this, or if you're doing it over a kettle, or if you're doing it over the stove on a simmering a shim simmering saucepan, then you, you might want to cover it with things. So there we go. Right, let's move on to the next block. Uh, the next block is... I'm not going to be using the steamer for this one, I think. I think for this one, I will probably use an iron. So, what do I need? I need the block. Ta-da! So, this is one of these interesting brim blocks that has a fold under edge here, which I'm interested to see what can be done with that. I don't necessarily have any ideas, but what I do have is an offcut from a parasizal straw from a charity shop. So that's another tip for you. If you are looking to practice something, if you can find a cheap charity shop hat, um, a charity shop hat that's cheaper than buying a full on cape clean, because sometimes it's not. Sometimes these days charity shops tend to up the prices of hats because they've realized that hats should be luxury items, but they really should not be worth more than about a fiver from a charity shop. Um, and if they are, then they're not worth it. Just plugging in my iron. Has that got some water in it? Not enough, because we need to steam. But I'm going to wait for my iron to steam to heat up before adding water into the in into it, because um, that preserves the iron a lot better. Just getting a little stand again, because this brim needs it. And the other thing that this brim needs is a collar. So I don't have any collars. So a brim collar is something that you'd pop on top of the brim that would be head size. What I do have is a hat jack, because I figured this is something that will do two in one functions. So I can use it as a little bit of a hat stretcher, which some people say you shouldn't, but I've done it and it's fine. And I'm also going to use this as my little head size. Now, I don't know what I want to do with this hat yet, but I do know that I want it to be about 55 centimeters. My head size is 54 centimeters. But I want to make it 55 just because I think it gives me a little bit more leeway of experimentation. There's no point in making a hat that no one except for me is going to wear, right? So I'm just going to pop the tape measure on here and release it, make sure that the base is 55. Oh, that's too big. Oh, no, that's even bigger. Let's see, is that 55? That's a little bit bigger than 55. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that'll do, 55 centimeters. And you want to masking tape that to your block. So, got my masking tape. 
always useful to have masking tape around and you want to make sure that it aligns well front to back so if you were doing this with a normal um brim a uh, what's it called brim collar collar block thing this would be much easier um in fact i'm i'm not too fussed because i know this is a practice but it would still be useful to get it spot on wouldn't it right so now i'm just going to take the masking tape and i'll try and show you on the front without burning myself on that iron just make sure it's nice and tight and then sticking it down the masking tape on the wood shouldn't be a problem but we will of course cover this in cling film in a second so in fact i don't know why i turned the iron on so soon when i wasn't ready are you guys having a nice time today watching me block how are you all doing is this fun enough <laughs> It doesn't need too much masking tape. It needs just enough masking tape. I can hear funny hat, cat, funny hat, funny cat noises coming from the other room. That sounds like my cat is doing something she's not supposed to do. She's a teenager now. In uh, So she's one year and a bit old. And in cat to human years, that is teenager. So she is, she's full on embodying the teenager ideals and refusing to cuddle. She was so cuddly, cuddly when she was a kitten and now she, she's not really into that. Um, but she does like to run around after catnip. Ah, there we go. Hus my husband is saying that Drusilla is desperate for playtime. Okay, well, we've got about 15 minutes to try and block this until I want to end the stream and then I will play with my kitten. Or my teenager, I guess, because she can't be my kitten anymore. She's all grown up. Right. Cling film. Let's see. I... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Do you know what? Maybe I should have tried tin foil on this, but I don't think I have enough in my cupboard to try that, so never mind. But really, you should not be skipping the cling film step because it is absolutely vital that you protect the wood. Because um, not only if you've got a new hat block, you want to preserve the newness, and if you've got an antique hat block like I do, you want to make sure that it carries on performing to its best until the very end. And even when it is the very end, it doesn't tend to... I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cover all the nooks and crannies of this. Right. I think that's gonna be as good as it gets. Do you know what? This is struggling to balance on, on this uh, wood turner block. I'm going to grab a jar. One second, everybody. I'm just getting a jar. I'm just getting a jar. I'm still here. So there we go, that's another tip. If you can't get your block to balance well on the block holder, it tends to do quite well in a jar. Let's see. Yeah, that'll do. That's a lot sturdier. Ooh, I was about to say that's a lot sturdier, but it's a very precarious construction. Right, let's, let's just get this shaped. So I was going to use the iron, and now I don't know what to do. Um... What would you guys, how would you guys block this? I mean, it, it shouldn't be that hard, but for some reason brims always fill me with dread. I know this is a practice, but even still. So that will fit over the top and it will need a collar fitting. So, yes, I'm going to heat up my iron again and turn on the steam. And the reason I'm going to do it with my iron and not the steamer is because I want to be able to hold it flat to the block. 
you know what? While I'm doing the top of the block, I think I'm going to balance it on the table. I think it's much safer. Uh, can you guys still see that? While the iron is heating up. Yeah, you can still see that. Wonderful. And my iron is hot. And I've got an iron cover on, which I'm not going to touch with my fingers. Get a bit more water into this. And this is filtered water. Uh, and I'll just get my iron pad out to test. Let's see. Steam, please be steamy. There we go, there's some steam. It doesn't sound as good as the steamer, does it? But I'm gonna crank it up to the steam setting and just Now, sometimes the irons will squirt out water and that could damage whatever material you're using. So you do want to be careful. There we go, that's taking shape. Oh, and it's starting to move. So this is where you need a blocking cord. I do have a, a quick short on how to make your own blocking cord. So if you don't have a blocking cord, you don't need to buy one. You can just make one yourself. Now the idea is, is that it will push down at the base of the block and hold its shape. So in fact, I'm going to pop, oh, oh dear. My whole thing is, my head fitting has moved. Do you know what? Uh, let's take this off and just double check the head fitting is fine. Or oh, did it move? Yes, it did move. <sighs> Don't you love it when things go wrong when you're live? Yeah, this is this is the problem with using one of these and not a collar block. Never mind. We're just going to have to hope that everything's going to be fine. So I'm going to pop a first pin in. Uh, I'm going to try and use the thinner pins. I don't really fancy using the thicker ones and I'm going to use the little hammer again. And so that's my first pin and it's gone through um, the blocking cord and the straw. So that's gonna hold the blocking cord down. I'm gonna start pulling. I'm going to pop in the next bit of cord around the front and sorry you can't see this but I'm just going to get a pin in while I've got it in place and then I will show you when I make the rest of the way around. Oh my iron is very hot, I can feel that. There we go. And I'm going to keep pulling. Uh, time to pull on the other side. Let's try and rotate the entire thing. Let's see. I mean, once again, this would be so much easier with a proper setup, but not everyone can have a proper setup. And so my aim is to show you all that you don't have to have a proper millinery, like a proper millinery studio setup with all the expensive equipment to be able to achieve quite nice things. That's always been my aim, really. And I am a bit frugal with money. I don't really like spending money, so... That's where that stems from. Oops. So it's going to need more pins in the blocking cord, and I haven't actually fixed the blocking cord yet, but I'm going to add more steam now. Just going to relax the weave. And if you were doing this without an iron cover, you don't want to be touching the straw, but because I've got an iron cover, 
I can touch the straw, not worry about burning it too much as long as I don't rest the iron on it. And if I didn't have an iron cover and I wanted to touch the straw with the iron, I would be using some baking paper or a pressing cloth some people use, but I find that pressing cloths stick to the stiffener, especially in straw because straw tends to um, have stiffener applied over the top. Although you'd apply your stiffener after blocking, but because this is a charity shop hat that I am repurposing for the purposes of experimentation, I know that it's got stiffener on it. And in fact, I can already feel it through my fingers. I can feel it being very sticky already. So I don't want to like touch it too much and get it grubby because stiffener is essentially like a glue. This is where I start putting more pins in into the collar. And I'm not actually pinning into the collar block or the hat jack. If you did have a collar block, maybe you could pin into it, but that depends on how the block maker has made it. I would always rather pin into the block. So, so this section, as you can see, my pins are all pointing downwards rather than into the collar. You're less likely to split the wood that way. All right, needs a few more pins. I think we're going to slightly struggle with the brim on the underside just to get this whole construction to, to flip over, but we'll see. We will see. A bit more steam is needed. And if you're wondering how I know when I need more steam, it's when I can feel the straw not moving anymore at the slightest touch. I'll show you what I mean on the other side in a second. So where have I not yet put in a pin? So let's say over here. So I can feel that that straw is very stiff with my nail. So I can, it's, it's hardly moving, but I want it to move like fabric. So I'm going to add some steam. Oops, and I've slightly melted the cling film there. But now suddenly when I push down, can you see how that weave just moved? It, it, the whole thing just started to move rather than it denting. That's what I want the steam to be doing. So that's how I know when it needs extra steam. All right, how are we doing? Oh, you see that needs a bit more there. Any time where I press down and the thing moves, I know it needs more pins. blocked this straw upside down. Yes, I have. Well done me. Never mind. It's just a practice. <laughs> we all make mistakes. The reason I know I've blocked it upside down is I'm starting to notice the knots. I don't want to lift this up, but you can see, I think you can see here, there's a little break in the weave. And what that break is, is there's a knot where the weaver of the straw has plaited in an extra strand. These should all be on the underside. Never mind. This is just a practice and mistakes happen. I don't want you all thinking that I'm perfect at everything every time. That would be silly because it would be untrue. Right, I'm gonna start pulling on the blocking cord now, just tightening it. And this is where I'm going to pin it down into itself and into the wood. This other side needs more pins. I'm very happy with how this side looks. So I'm just going to very carefully rotate the entire thing. There it is. So you can see here, we've got that problem where it's stepping up. And once I finish this, it's going to be the end of the stream. So I'll put in my last pin and then we'll have a little summary. And what I will do is when the stream is over is I will finish blocking this on the underside. And then in the next stream next month, we can go through and take it off the blocks and see how it's turned out. So, okay, 
Uh, I think it requires a couple more pins here, but I don't want to overrun too much because I'm a little bit tired today and my foot's hurting. So, <laughs> there we are. Um, some blocks. Should we see what we've done today, just to sum up? So we've got this one that I'm not going to lift off the table because I know that this masking tape has not been very good. Uh, then we've got... This purple turban straw... Uh, turban straw... Fur felt. Turban fur felt with the rope that's holding in the grooves and I will need to pin in underneath and that's fine, that's quite easy. We all know how to do that. We've all done that before, so I will be doing that later. Let's have a look. What else did we do earlier? Whoopsie. Oh dear. Breaking everything. Let me turn off that iron. We did the paper that you've just seen and for those of you who missed the beginning of the stream, this is what you missed. Again, I didn't finish it because I'm trying to keep to a tight schedule, but this is the blocking of a cinema bias brim on this little wavy ring brim block thing. So there we go. That's everything we've done today. So we've done we've done all the materials. We've done paper, we've done cinema, we've done straw and we've done fur. Well, I guess that's everything that I had planned today. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourself. And um, please, if you have enjoyed yourself, please consider liking and subscribing because that will help my video reach more people. So thank you so much for watching. And I've, I've had a lovely time with your company as always. And there will be another stream following from this next month and if you click the notification bells once you've subscribed you will be notified when that goes live and then you won't miss the beginning that's how that's how that works <laughs> so with all that thank you so much for watching everybody and i will see you next time bye